I'm gonna be honest with you folks, sometimes it is hard to understand what model can we choose. Visual Studio has so many features, we have so many models we can ask, we have so many things to do. And here's the thing about today's episode, I'm gonna talk to you about options. How can you choose the best option for your model and how to choose your best option to do anything on Visual Studio. Stay tuned. Once again, I'm here showing you the classic UI, and this is from the documentation. If you remember, we did an episode on documentation. If you want to take a look, please take a look on the Visual Studio channel. Right now, we can see have our components working. Everything is working nicely. And as well, we have agent and ask. This time, I'm going to choose ask. In ask mode, you can see we have tons of premium models we can choose. We have GPT, O3 tons of cloud and Gemini models. And you can see right here as well, the premium request. So each ask I do a model, it consumes a little bit on my premium requests. If I take a look on how many you have remaining, please take a look on your copilot settings. So now I'm thinking, great, um, when I choose models, usually what I recommend is the following. Let's pick GPT-5 mini. GPT-5 mini are really good in making small changes. So as you can see here, I have my temperature in Celsius, I have my forecast, etc. And here I have my comments. Let's ask GPT-5 mini to do a change. So we can always add a reference here and then the files. Right, right here, I can do the active document. And I can ask, hey, could you add a new variable on the table for the city's weather? As we are on the ask mode, it we actually add on the chat window, will not update directly. But don't worry, you can click just here in apply, and then it applies all changes. And here we can see all changes it made to the file. Seems like it's working. And then if we want to accept this, we can just tab to accept, and boom, everything now is already added. We can even see how does it work. So here we have our amazing new variable, which has like, the random share next for humanity between 0 and 100%. Let's run. While this is building, I want to take a look on what it generates once again. Even sure, you're going to apply and tap, but just don't tap, tap, tap. Always read what is changing. It's really important while you're doing amazing changes with AI that you're responsible for your code. I always take a look on your code before doing any changes. And here we have our amazing weather. And here we have humidity on 71% and doing it as random. As probably, <laughs> this is a very human New York City. And, you know, kind of dry for London. London's very human. Uh, Sydney, yes, for sure. That's expected. So, okay. That's great that GPT-5 Mini can do a lot of things. But why should I go and change it for other models? Let me show you an example. Cloud models are amazing for debugging and write documentation. Opus, like this Opus 4 here, is incredible for bugs, really hard bugs you can actually try and fix. Not saying that other models like O3 and GPT-5 cannot do it, but they can always try for different functionalities. Gemini can do great things with UI, and that, that doesn't mean that the other models cannot do it, but it means that there are some models that are really good at doing things. But usually people use Opus for debugging hard problems and Gemini for some UI tasks, and GPT for the rest, which are always incredible. Of course, we have different agents. If you don't have any more premium things we can use, imagine that you have like the Pro, right? But you run out. You can do a lot of things with GPT 4.1, 5 mini, and 4.0. But of course, we have premium models for GPT 5, Sony, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. There's a difference between models that think and models that do it directly. Imagine like O3, Opus, and Pro. They think, right? So it means that they do a chain of thought to do the correct action. It doesn't mean that other models cannot do the correct action, but sometimes you need a little bit more sauce, right? You need a little bit more this chain of thought continuation to do and choose the correct thing to solve your problem. As you can see on the agent, these are different than in the ask. So you may ask, Pablo, why should I do the, the ask mode? If I can agent can do a lot of things. Well, sometimes you have questions, right? Sometimes you want someone that can collaborate with you, be more imaginative and talking about new features. So let's go back here and get here a different model to test a little bit. Let's go with Sonei. 
Um, hey, what would be a cool feature to add to my weather? And then you can actually talk a little, a little bit here. You can try to get questions answered. Oh, let's think about visual enhancements, interactive features, data. Then you can say, hey, what do you think about, you know, amazing weather icons? And say, I'm sure, let's implement weather icons and color coding. And then I will start implementing this of you. As I like to remember, please check code before anything. Then here it put, you can see the styling. One thing, it would sometimes try to put like code. I'm gonna apply this, but if you're doing styling, please try to separate in a CSS and a styling. So try to not put everything together. It can be a little bit hard to make some maintenance later. Then we can just click once again in apply. Oh, there you go with the correct temperatures right here. So we have like here temperatures working flawlessly with the colors. And you may ask, okay, that's great. But imagine that I want to learn more about Business Studio. Um, because here's the thing, we have tons of options, but imagine that I want to debug this better. So I can put at Business Studio right here and, and ask on how can I debug my code? And here it will go call a char participant. The chat participant, actually it is a thing that helps you to debug and ask some questions about it. So here we have this helper from Visual Studio. And here it's asking, you can start debugging, you can set breakpoints, you can debug windows, controls, etc. And even diagnostic tools, like here. And you can click, and boom, you can actually enable diagnostic tools as it shows. We can even ask the copilot about it. What does it do? And how can I go and take a look on that? right here. Folks, we can see here what those the smallest models can do, right? So GPT-5 Mini, 4.1, Gemini 2.0 Flash, and others. What they can do, they can be very specific for very small tasks, like add this variable, add this thing. They are very small and they're quite quick, and then you can do it easily. So models, you can use more. For instance, you can use Sony 4, you can use GPT-5 and Gemini Pro 2.5 for some of the harder things, right? So you can brainstorm a new feature, you can create this new feature of it, and then try to implement and fix a bug, as we had right here. And some models are for debugging, helping you to debug. Like, for instance, the Cloud Opus 4.1. It can get really tough challenges and can help you fix with chain of thought and try to, you know, make you to have a better and more solid product for you to you know develop and deploy so imagine i have that bug and i wanted to know more i even asked on here this is our chat participant this is visa at visa studio and here we can do more with ask right here i'm in ask mode let me just zoom a little i can create here a new chat Sony 4 is great for asking again so just to show that chart participants can work for anyone, I'm going to use Gemini 2.0 Flash. But here I can add the chat participant at VS. And I can ask him, um, hey, can Visual Studio run .NET Framework? The folks who doesn't know, .NET Framework is one of the oldest SDKs that we have that tons of users to use it every single day. Lots of applications have been made with .NET Framework. So let's go and see what it answers. And you can see here that, yes, it can run a .NET Framework. You can create it using this. Let's see a difference with Sony 4. And I can ask, how oh, can I run a .NET Framework project on Visual Studio? You can even see that different models have different ways to answer. So right here, was quick, was short, was fast. But here is it's lower, it is typing, and it's saying create a new project. And here you have some of the project's templates, some of the pro the projects, and some of the requirements. Let's go here to Opus as well to demonstrate one more thing. How can I modernize a .NET framework project to .NET 9? And here you get it sees it takes a lot longer, right? It is talking about what you can do. It is very much more specific. It types more. It tries to 
make one that's then a little bit better. You can see right here, it gives me some samples. We can use the .NET Upgrade Assistant, the manual migration, and some migration tasks that usually happen. But you can use as well the modernization. So we have some modernizations for .NET already made. You can learn more on this amazing repo. We have the Modernize Monolith Workshop which you can modernize a .NET framework to microservices on Azure. And it's so amazing with GitHub Copilot. And you can see it, my face here. Hello. And here you can see tons of things we can actually implement with GitHub Copilot and how fast it makes your development and upgrades go. Now you can see how can we chat participants, how they even change with models and the different impact that models have in between the responses. And as you can see, those are incredible ways that you can have quick answers or sometimes answers that you need to think much more. If you have any questions, please let us know. We are so happy to answer any questions that you may have. See you soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.